Hi, I'm Mel. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making Tex-Mex stuffed shells. Try saying that three times fast. The first thing you're going to need for this recipe is jumbo shells. Your end goal is to have about 12 shells, which means you probably want to put about 15 in the water because sometimes your shells have cracks. And if they're cracked, there is a good chance that they're going to tear. This particular one, I'm not going to put in the water because it just looks a little too battered and I don't have high hopes for it. This one, I'll take the gamble. I mean, it's a small crack. It may or may not tear. I don't know for sure on that. This one is totally intact. So in to inspect your pasta before you put it in the water. And for these, we're just gonna go and cook according to the directions on the box. So this particular brand happens to recommend that you cook for nine minutes if you're gonna bake them again, like with a ricotta stuffed shell. If you're going to do this with just sauce, they recommend 11, so I'm just gonna go and take them at 10. Now I'm pulling these out with a slotted spoon. I recommend a slotted spoon or a spider if you have one, just because they are a little bit delicate and you don't want to risk just cracking them, destroying them by dumping the water into a colander. If you do, just dump it into a colander, do it slowly and carefully, and hopefully you won't have too many that come out damaged. Thus far, these are looking pretty good. I saw one floating in there that has some tears in it, so we'll just have to keep an eye on that. And I'm trying to get some of the water out because I'm transferring these into a small colander sitting on a towel so that they'll drain a bit more. Um, this one you can see is probably not one we're going to use because it is cracked and torn and this is one that the spill, the filling will just spill out and we don't want to do that. So again, we've got one a little bit of damage but it's at the edge so that one might be okay. We might use that one you know, if we have some leftover filling, but, you know, that's not going to be one of the primary ones. When you pick your 12, pick the ones that are in the best condition, and we can always kind of smudge an extra in there if we need to. So, I'm going to go ahead and let these cool, and then we'll get started by prepping our meat. For our meat, I am using a lean ground beef. Um, I have about a pound of that in here. This is a recipe that also works if you're using a soy crumble or a ground turkey, if you're wanting a little bit leaner, an option. I did choose a lean ground beef for this particular recipe because I don't need all of the grease. I'm also going to have more liquid in here because I'm using a picante sauce as part of the filling. So I'm not worried about it being too dry. Now if you do go over to using a soy crumble or a ground turkey, you may want to consider upping your flavor just a little bit by adding a little more heat using a hotter pecani sauce than you might normally. Like if you're a mild, maybe you go to a medium, or maybe you just up your flavor profile by adding a little more garlic or perhaps a flavored salt. I'm actually going to be using a touch of a habanero salt in here instead of a kosher and I'm just going to use a little bit because the pecan sauce already has salt in it so I don't want this to get super salty but I do want it to have a little extra heat, a little extra flavor. So as this browns I'm going to go ahead and add just a light dusting of garlic powder. As I've said before, I like garlic, so that's probably about half a teaspoon. I'm going to take a little bit, just a little bit, of habanero salt. I'm not even doing the pinch by hand because I really don't need that on my skin. And then I'm going to do a quick, light dust of pepper, black pepper, you know, probably about a quarter to a half of a teaspoon would be plenty. But again, if you just want to do a little bit of regular kosher salt and pepper on this, 
that's fine. We're going to be adding in a few other things along the way. And I'm cooking this on a medium heat. I don't want to blacken it. I just want to get it brown. And it goes fairly quick. Now, while this is finishing up, and I'm chopping this into smaller pieces with my spatula because we're going to be stuffing the shells and so having big hunks is not really desirable. You want to have a little bit finer meat pieces in here. So since that is almost done browning, I'm going to go ahead and add in about a half a cup of chopped onion and four ounce container drained of hatch chilies. I went with the, ooh, we have a little extra chili stem in there. I went with the hot hatch chilies. They also come in mild. So again, I like a little extra heat in this one because the pecani sauce I picked out is just sort of a mild to medium picante sauce. It's not something that, that's gonna leave you in pain. And we're gonna go ahead and get the onions softened up. The hatch chilies are already pretty soft because they came out of a can. So give this just a moment. Get this all to melt together. You can also kind of chop up a little bit of the onion as you go. They will shrink down, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to cook up, and then we'll come back. So at this point, everything looks really good, really done. Because this was a very lean ground beef, I don't have any grease to drain. But if you happen to have um, a little pool of grease that has started to gather, um, go ahead and drain the grease out. And of course, dispose of it properly down the sink will buy you nothing but problems. So <laughs> I always recommend people, you know, remember to dispose of their grease properly. I've gone ahead and killed the heat on this because this is done. What I'm going to add is a half cup of picante sauce and three quarters of a cup of those really fun french fried onions. I love those. They're just delightful. Let's stir this in. Kind of break up some of the onions a bit. You don't want huge chunks. I know they have you know, the big flaky pieces. But we're just going to go ahead and stir this all together. As it sizzles away. Now I know it looks a little dry at this point, but we're going to be putting more picante sauce on top. So don't worry too much. Okay, so we have that together. We're going to add a cup of shredded cheese. This can be cheese of your liking. I'm using a Mexican four cheese blend. And basically the shredded packaged cheese usually comes in two cup packages. It's an eight ounce package. And if you don't want to use a measuring cup, just dump out half the bag and you're fine. I don't like washing measuring cups very much either. So, so as you can see, this is getting all nice and melty. And what I'm going to do is transfer this to a bowl to cool just a little bit because when we're stuffing the shells, I really don't want to singe my fingertips off. So we will go ahead and transfer this 
and let it sit for just like a couple minutes to cool down so that you feel comfortable handling it. So at this point, I've prepared our pan with three quarters of a cup of picante sauce across the bottom. We have our meat that's cooled enough to handle and we have our shells ready to go. One note on the picante sauce is that you start with a 16 ounce bottle and if you just want to do a third, a third, a third, so a third in the pan, a third in the meat, and a third across the top, that'll work too if you don't want to be exact in your measurements. But for the sake of more accurate figuring, um, three quarters of a cup in here, half a cup in here, half a cup across the top. So I'm just going to take a spoon, take a shell. Kind of gently handle these very gently because these tear very easily and just place it in your pan it's still a little steamy but I'm gonna live dangerously And you don't really want them to overflow too much. You, know, you want that shell to kind of curl around it a little bit. It's naturally inclined to curl. Now see this one has a little bit of a, a tear in it, but that's okay, I'm not too worried about that. That's not catastrophic failure. You don't want the ones that are all to pieces. It just ends up with spillage. And normally with this pan, I can get three across and four down. So that's our 12 shells that we talked about earlier. Again, there's a little bit of tearing on this one, but not enough to be catastrophic failure. The other thing to be careful of is sometimes when you pull them out, you've had two shells that have kind of stuck together and curled within each other. So you have to pry them apart. This shell, yeah, it's a little, t it's a little too far gone. I'm not gonna be able to save it. We're gonna put it off to the side. And you can just get a nice little filling in there. Now the nice thing with this is that you can make it a little bit ahead of time and put your pan in the refrigerator. All you do is you avoid putting the final topping of sauce and cheese and fried onions on it. You do that right before you put it in the oven. If you've had it in the refrigerator, you may need to bake it just a little bit longer because it's gonna come chilled. Right now this is still warm the shells are cool but the meat is still warm so you're not worried about warming it all the way through the, the way that you would if it was coming cold out of the refrigerator but just pop it in the refrigerator covered with some plastic wrap and if you're using a glass pan be very careful don't put a very cold glass pan into a hot oven that's not a good idea um, so <laughs> Ceramic, also be a little careful. Let it sit out for a little bit. Let the little pan that you're using warm up a little bit before you put it directly onto a hot oven rack. Again, avoid disaster. And it comes out to just about right. We have just a little bit of meat left. I have one shell left. I'm gonna just shimmy a little bit. So we'll have a baker's dozen on this one. Sometimes you can do that. Or the other option you have is you can just go add a little bit to one that might be a little smaller, a little shy, not as full. So up to you. What we're going to do is take our half cup of picante sauce, 
just drizzle, drizzle. I like using a measuring cup with a handle on this that, and a pour spout. It makes it a little bit easier to control. But as I said before, when we were making this, the meat looked like it might be a little dry, but we're adding this picante sauce on top. And the thing is, you really do want to use a picante sauce because a pico de gallo doesn't have enough liquid in it. So just old school picante sauce. I'm using paste, nothing too exciting here, but it serves the purpose. Then I'm gonna go back in and you know that cup of cheese that was still in the bag. I'm gonna go ahead, sprinkle that generously across the top. All nice and neat. Now, I could use a full cup of the Mexican cheese blend on this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use a little bit of a specialty cheese, just to give it a little extra kick. This is a ghost pepper jack. It's actually a smoked ghost pepper jack. So it's gonna give this dish a little extra heat. I use this carefully. <laughs> if you're eating it straight off the block, it's really spicy, but there is a North Carolina company that makes this, so we'll give a little bit of cheese from the locals here. And then what I like to do is to go ahead and put about a half a cup of these French fried onions in here. I'm not gonna measure exactly because why dirty a cup when I have fingers. So we're gonna go ahead. If you want a little bit more, I love these. This looks great right here in the center. Um, so I love these and they're so crunchy and good and they just add a little bit of something. A little crunch, a little texture. They get really nice and golden in the oven. Okay. So we have this ready to go. We're gonna put it in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes, 30 to 35. It sort of depends on how your oven runs. If you are taking this cold out of a refrigerator, you're gonna to need to put it in a, bit, a little bit longer. You'll need to check it at about probably the 40 minute mark and see how things are going. Here we are 30 minutes later. Everything is all melty and golden brown and we are ready to eat. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks so much.